that change colors and flavors. Oh, science -y. Oh my gosh, it's the gushiness. <laughs> Welcome to our second edition of 90s Kid Snacks. Again? Yes, okay. The last time, they tasted really good. <gasps> Yay! I'm excited. I was in the first one. I loved it. There was Hubba Bubba tape, um, Pez. There's a lot of 90s snacks that still exist. I hope I've seen some of them before. Now, some of these snacks weren't necessarily first invented in the 90s, but definitely became a popular item in the 90s, and some are still seen today. Oh, okay. When you eat something, like, as a kid, and then you eat it now, you remember of back of that time back then? I'm just trying to think, like, what would be 90s kid snacks? Like peanut butter and jelly? I, I have no clue. They might be really good, and they might be really bad. I feel like it has to have a lot of color and sugar. And I feel like that's still true today. Here is your first 90s snack. <gasps> yes, I seen those. I like this shape because it looks like a unicorn horn. Bugles? They look like ice cream cones without the ice cream. If you turn them like this, they look like a scary witch finger. But if you turn them like this, they kind of look like a tornado. Yeah, I've never actually had these, but I think I've seen a commercial for this. Good. Kind of tastes like Fritos. I'm getting kind of corn in the taste. It's very, very crunchy. These remind me of those things you usually see, like decorations on a table at Thanksgiving. Mmm. These taste really good. They're salty, but they don't have too much of a flavor where it's like crazy, like exploding with different stuff. Are these like something big? And I just been like living under a rock. So these are called bugles. They were made in the same factory in West Chicago, Illinois, until the factory was closed in 2017. These triangle-shaped chips were a fun way to pretend you had long fingernails. Well, the first thing I came to mind was a unicorn horn. <laughs> very, very odd, but kind of fun, actually. Hello. And that ate my fingernail. This is fun, like... Go like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. See? I'm smart. I'm a 90s kid. Boom. All right, here's your next one. <gasps> go -gurt! You can take them on the go in the yogurt. That's why they're called go -gurt. I ate so many of these when I was younger. Wow. So these were very popular in the 90s? Yummy. It was a fun experience. It's not really like the factor of savor the flavor. It's the fast way of eating it. Mm. I like it better like this because it's more fun. I really like yogurt, and you don't need a spoon. <laughs> so it's easy to carry around with you. I remember having like jokes on these. I always just love to read the questions and then just try to figure it out without looking at the bottom. Yogurt on the go. They were also known as Yoplay tubes in Canada and as Froobs in the United Kingdom. Froobs. Who came up with that? Sounds kind of weird. Like, fruit tube. Oh, fruit tubes. That actually doesn't sound that weird that I actually put it together. They should just call them Froobs everywhere. Like, hey, you got a Froob here? Here is your next one. Oh, I love these. These are my favorites. I always see these types of snacks at school. So, I mean, if snacks like these were more popular in the 90s than they are now, that's kind of crazy. I don't really like these things <laughs> that much. Is that even real cheese? Probably not. They're okay. I like the cheese more than, like, I like the combination. Like mini breadsticks. Mini cheesy breadsticks. They don't taste bad, but they're not good. These things are just really underwhelming. Like they don't have like a flavor. Like they're just crunchy, 
like sticks. You can at least try a little bit harder. I mean, come on. So these are called Handy Snacks. This was an inspiration to boost Lunchable sales. Handy Snacks is a mass-produced cheese and cracker snack that is prepared using processed cheese. I honestly get it. Uh, it's pretty good. It Seems like it wouldn't cost a lot. It's fast. The way it's packaged is it's easy to carry with you in like a bag, a lunch bag. I think that it's really cool that they didn't just keep it in the 90s. I appreciate that they wanted some of the 90s snacks to come back to life. All right, let's do the next one. <gasps> gushers! Oh my gosh, these are gushers. Yes, I had these before. And they're really juicy. And they're not my favorite of the fruit snacks. Because when you bite into them, you're like, normal, normal. Oh my gosh, it's the gushiness. They're fruity, they're yummy, and they're sweet. It was good, but I mean, I didn't really taste any juice come out. It just felt like a gummy. It tastes better than I remember. I kind of like it. They have gel on the inside, and most fruit snacks do not. So these are called Gushers. I haven't really like heard of them in such a long time. Introduced in 1991, these fruit snacks in the shape of elongated hexagonal bipyramids made primarily from sugar and fruit juice are still popular today. All right. The idea of like eating a gummy and then like just having the juice come out probably was unique back then. There's nothing really like them out there. Other stuff, you just eat it, and it's like, it's fruit flavor. Gushers, like, they gush, like, that's their thing, and it's delicious. All right, let's do the last one. Hmm. Never heard of this before. Jawbreakers that change colors and flavors. Oh, science-y. I used to see, like, a bunch of movies. For example, Willy Wonka. They were, like, talking about gobstoppers and all that, and I was like, what's a gobstopper? I wish they looked like the ones from the movie. Like, they don't look like, they're just, like, little round, like, jawbreakers. It's so tiny. I'm gonna go for a red. It tastes like the pink-flavored gum. I'm gonna do yellow, because I love yellow. Good. I don't see if there's anything like really special about them except for like the name and they're from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So after a while, it'll change color and flavor. Mmm, orangey. Still orangey. It's good. It's kind of yellowish orange. It takes a while to do that. What color is it now? So these are called Gobstoppers, a Willy Wonka-inspired candy. These jawbreakers take several weeks to manufacture as the process of adding liquid sugar is repeated multiple times until it dries. Hmm, they were actually inspired by Willy Wonka. That's pretty cool. Oh, I love those movies. I love the original better. It's Gene Wilder. The term Gobstopper derives from gob, which is slang in the United Kingdom and Ireland for mouth. Hmm. I mean, that's cool that it has like a meaning and it's not just like a weird word they made up. You want to have a mouth stopper? A gobstopper sounds like better. They're really cool because when you because when you put them in your mouth and you suck a while, it changes colors and flavors, and I think that's a great idea. What did you think of all these 90s snacks today? They were all like really good. I mean, they were all sugary. They all tasted delicious, and some of them I had already eaten before. Those people are like lucky, I guess. People who are who like got to like have these a lot of the time. They all had their like own unique thing to them. They may have been popular in the 90s and had their peak of popularity back then, but I mean, I still see a lot of these today. Thanks for watching Kids vs. Food on the React channel. Don't miss out, be sure to subscribe. What food should we try next? Let us know in the comments. Bye. What's up guys, Alyssa here, a producer from the React channel. Thanks so much for heading back to the 90s to have some snacks with us today. If you're here within the first 30 minutes of this episode releasing, say hi to me in the comments.